class and you you can't sit next to each other. You can't, I mean, just a lot of differences. So I commend you and I thank you for being here today. You know, when, when she asked me to, when professor, should I call you professor? Asked me to be here today. I was like, absolutely. And I think one of the things I want to just highlight here is you never know when you're going to make an impression on somebody. Um, I think it's important for you to always realize that, like for myself, being an Olympic athlete and winning a medal, we, my, my mindset had kind of shifted um, into that mentality in representing my country. So I'll give you a bit of a background for me. So I grew up in the Caribbean uh, till I was eight, moved to Canada. Hands up, who knows where Canada is? Let's please, hopefully you all know where Canada is. That's a good answer. Um, and I was the shyest kid in the world. Nobody would ever believe that because now you cannot shut me up. Um, and sports changed my life. How many people here played sports? Throw your hands up so I can kind of know what stories to go with. Okay. All of you except for one in the front. Okay. So played sports, changed my life, made me who I am today. I went from the shyest kid to like, if anybody asked me, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was like, I want to be an Olympian. And this is before women's soccer was in the Olympics. I remember getting cut. I was 14. Um, I was the only one of my friends not to make it. I remember driving to the tryouts, big team, like state team. Every single one made it except for me, the loud girl who was telling the world what I was going to be. And I tell you this story because being cut was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I spent the next, next year doing 15 minutes more before practice or after practice. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I bet you, you've had some situations in your life where everything you wanted was pulled away from you. And I remember sitting in the car and my dad was like, and my mom was like, oh, I love you. And I was like, dad, why aren't you mad with me? My life is over. I'm 14. I just got cut. Life is over. And he asked me, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to make one person determine your future? And I'll tell you, I tell you the 15 minutes more because I'm telling you that today. What is it that you want to be? Who is it that you want to be in this world? And it doesn't have to be clear, but you have to start thinking ahead. You have to start thinking of realizing the greatness that you have inside of you. Because again, this world will tell you that we're all average, but you need to start realizing the greatness that you have inside of you. Whatever your past was has led you to this moment. But until you understand the uniqueness that you have inside of you, and trust me, the world's not going to remind you. The world will remind you of that you're not good enough. The world will remind you that you're average. The world will remind you of all their mistakes, why they want to chill in this world of average rather than step up and be your own hero. And I say that strongly because it's time that you, especially in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of like going to school in a different breath, in the midst of everybody around you trying to figure out who they are in this world, you have to remind yourself that there's something in you to do great things. And that's what I had to do at age 14. And that 15 minutes more every single day is the same thing. If you spend 15 minutes more every single day, less time on Instagram, maybe. I'll just say that because I had to also remove myself from just being on Instagram every day. Less time on whatever it is, TikTok, but more time on you and really studying who is it that I want to be and where. Where do I want to you're young? I still think I'm young. I act like I'm 25 years old. You can ask my husband. I'm like, yeah, I'm 25, you know. But every single day I, I go out and I'm like, I'm going to be the best version of myself. But I'm able to do that because I can see who it is and what I want to be. But that 15 minutes more every single day led me to be on the national team. I was the youngest player at that time. And I represented my country for 18 years, meaning I got to travel the world, play the sport of soccer playing sold out stadiums. When I retired, it was a home world cup. And I remember driving on the bus down the same streets and the same coach who cut me like, Hey, LeBlanc, you remember me? I was like, I ain't got time for you. But he had my name on the back of his shirt. The same coach who cut me at a sold out stadium had my name on the back of his Jersey as if he, he claimed he made me. But I'm telling you that story because it was taken from me. And that's when I realized how badly I wanted it. 
And that would lead me to go on to be a UNICEF ambassador or have this amazing job, you know, have your professor as my intern. But really, she wasn't. Because what was amazing about, about that is she made the decision that I may be here for a couple amount of weeks, but I'm going to make the best impression in this time. I'm going to show my work ethic. I'm going to show my commitment. I'm going to say, hey, I don't know this. Can you help me? But I'm going to sit down and learn. And I guess my question to you is, you're, you're at school and university and you're supposed to learn. But when was the last time you actually sat down in front of somebody and just sat there willing to learn about life? And I think if anything you hear from me is, A, remember, you have greatness in you. You have something unique in you. But you got to have like this, this vision of who you want to be on this earth. It's a big word. But so that when, whenever your time comes at the end, you will have known that you lived your life to its fullest. So anyway, I don't even know if I answer your question there, but that's my thought. <laughs> oh, I think that definitely gave me some goosebumps. So it reminds me back to our conversations we used to have back in when I was 10 feet away from your desk. It was always <laughs> impactful conversations that shaped me and my perspective. Um, so I think you pretty much spoke about it, but what were the biggest challenges faced throughout your injury? I remember you spoke to me a lot about injuries that you went through. Um, you had a ton of surgeries. I think we have a lot of athletes here that resonate with your athletic journey, and I'm sure that they'd love to hear how you bounce back. How are you this incredibly positive human ready to give back to the world, even when the world told you you shouldn't? Yeah, I, I, I had a, a good amount of injuries. Um, I played in five World Cups. So for those of you who know soccer, um, World Cups every four years. Um, so same as the Olympics. And I remember being injured before, right before one of the World Cups, right before one of the Olympics. Um, my last, my last ever World Cup, I uh, had come out and told the world early in the year, this is going to be it. This is it. My last dance, a home World Cup. And I remember I was injured right before. And it was one of those things where I think in the pit of things, and this is relatable to life. If when you're in the pit, the hardest moments, you can almost sit back and say like, you know what, like this is preparing me for my next level of greatness, right? Because sometimes we don't hear what we need to hear and learn in life when things are at the, the highs, right? Because we all know when things are going for us, we're like, yeah, I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. You know, you're enjoying life. But it's when you're almost like in the lows and the pits where you're like, what? What's going on? And I think in, 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 throughout my injuries, I was able to be like, okay, you know what? What else can I learn? So I'd learn about the game from watching video and whatnot. But I think it, it, it made it really personal when I was in no control and letting go of that control. So the only thing I think I learned about the toughest times, and this comes in the pandemic where I gave birth to my daughter. I had to be away from her for the first two weeks because I had heart failure. Um, I was like, okay, pause. First of all, I'm stronger than I think that I am. Again, this is pandemic, so this is relatable to all. But also, what, what, what can I learn in this hard time that's going to prepare me for my next level of greatness? Because I think life is kind of like this. It's not just this, and it's not just this. It's ups and downs. But in the downs, if you can really truly believe that, yo, th there's another level of greatness coming for me. I just can't sit here and feel sorry for myself. I got to own where I am and, and be okay with it. Not be like celebrating that it's a crappy time, but really celebrating that, that you know and you believe that a new level of greatness is going to come from it. I think that's one of the, the key lessons I learned from, you know, playing at that elite level. Yeah, that's so impressive. All the things that you've been through. Guys, four times five, that's 20 years. That's a lot of years that she's played. Um, Whoa, I'm only 25. <laughs> just, you you know? all five. When you were five, you had your first yeah, yeah, you know, you know. So I think what important question is that I really try to resonate with the students, you know, only so I think the statistic is 1% of athletes make it to the professional level. So I, I'm curious, you have had an, a successful career. You were a FIFA legend. You are a FIFA legend. But, you know, the transition from, you know, being an athlete, from being in the, in the light, from being all the glory and everything to now be an impacting females on a different platform. How are you able to develop your identity outside of your sport? How are you able to like say goodbye or make peace with it? 
You know, that's, that's uh, one of the hardest things that athletes go through. Um, I think, you know, I've, I've had a privileged life to meet and hang out with some of the greatest from Messi to, you know, like the line goes. And then on the female side, a lot of the best players are, are good friends of mine. When it comes to transitioning from being an athlete to whatever it else is in life, I think uh, we call it the first death, right? Because you're like, you only know yourself as, you know, Karina LeBlanc, the soccer player, or whatever sport you all played. And I think one of the things is, is that transition's hard. But one of the best advices I got was, you know, first of all, you got to surround yourself with the right people. So I started to create my board of directors and the board of directors. If you think of any top company in the world, they have a board of directors, right? So why as individuals, do we not have that? And on your board is not like all people who just tell you you're great period, but it's people who will challenge you. And I think one of the things I started to do was just saying to people, Hey, can I steal you for a cup of coffee? Can I pick your brain? Right? Because one of the things in, in, as athletes is we've learned so many things that, that are important in life, how to communicate, how, how that failure is actually okay, right? Failure is a good thing because that's when you find out a lot about yourself and situations. You also find out if you like things or not. We learn how to, to, to work as a team, to communicate, how to lead. All these things that you learn as athletes, and this is for me, I had to learn this, is actually helpful in life and in world and in an executive position. So right now, like, so I have a team I lead. I've been leading for 18, 20 years being an athlete playing for my country, but it was a different kind of lead. And I think it's recognizing the tools that you have and really celebrating those as you move into the transition of what do you want to do next? But it goes back to understanding who you are. Like, what are your strengths? What do you uniquely bring to this world? And really nailing those down, putting your hand up to be like, hi. I mean, you know, you and I had some of those conversations where you're like, you know what? I'm trying to figure this out. I was like, hey, you know what? You got to trust what you have. And I think as athletes, that's what we always did. We knew, I mean, a big game, big day. Like you weren't sitting there on the biggest game, biggest day being like, I suck. No, you're sitting there being like, okay, I've put in the time, I've put in the work, this is the reward, let's go. And it's the same if you're taking an exam, like put in the time, put in the work, you're confident, let's go. And taking those tools that you've used to be successful at the point you are now to be successful in life. Does that make sense? That makes sense, guys. Yeah, no, it totally does. I think, you know, when I was there with Karina, I mean, I, I was... Um, I was a junior in college and it was intimidating. I was surrounded by a lot of people who were very high up and I was like, whoa, like sometimes I didn't believe in myself to see like, man, can I really go and speak to Karina right now? Like she is it, like, can I? But it's like she says, it's like looking within yourself and realizing who you are and believing in all your potential that you have. Because if you don't believe it, nobody's gonna believe it. And it took me like learning to believe in myself. And I think I was so inspired by Karina because she has this, this ability to make you believe in yourself without her even telling you about it. Just she has this energy about her that when you're around her, you just want to be the best version of yourself because she, every single day, she comes with her best foot forward and she's ready to change the world. So I think one of the things that, one of the common themes that we've been seeing in class is sometimes students are afraid to reach out. They're afraid to, to, for failure. They don't want to fail. They don't want to go out to um, somebody that could potentially be a mentor and say, hi, like, would you like to help me? Because they don't want to feel wrong. They don't want to feel like they're not special or all these things. So what advice do you think these majority of these students here are freshmen, uh, maybe one or two sophomores, but what advice would you have for these freshman students as they navigate their college experience and start, you know, acquiring mentors and athletes and non-athletes, although we have a lot of athletes in here, but also for the non-athletes as well. Multiple things. I mean, if somebody says no to you, so what? <laughs> I mean, who cares? You know how many people on this earth? So many. Don't put everything into one person because 
that that person's opinion of you won't matter. Like, I can't even tell you all the people who said no to me. I don't remember them, right? I remember the ones who did. I'd, I'd say this, like, you've got to have that confidence in yourself. And let me just tell you, a lot of people fake it till they make it, right? And I'm not saying to go out there and be like, like cocky and be like, I, I, no, just be confident. And what gives you confidence is you putting in the work. So if you put in the work and the time into you, you're your biggest asset. If you put in the work and the time to believing in them, that's fine. And don't get me wrong. I sometimes needed other people to believe in me, right? So I got this position at CONCACAF. It was the first, it was created. It was brand new. And the president had the faith and the confidence in me. Our general secretary had the faith and confidence in me and be like, you know what? Like this other stuff, we can teach you that. What you have is gold. And so that's why I say those board of directors will start to guide you so that if one or two people say no, they're like, just get back on it, right? And these board of directors are different age groups, right? Different jobs. They're not all the same people. I don't even have any of my former teammates as board of directors, which is interesting because I'm still close to a lot of my teammates. But I needed people who saw more in me than I saw in myself. But I just need to remind you, like, I mean, I can't, let me tell you something, standing on the podium and winning an Olympic medal, which was an ultimate dream of mine. First of all, I was crying the ugliest cry in the world. So I wish somebody would have said, cry gracefully. Because when you go to my hometown, there's a wall, like a building sized poster of me like this. Like it's the worst thing in the world. But standing on that podium, crying the ugliest tears, I was crying not because we'd won, but the process and the journey that I'd gone through with my 18 best friends next to me and all the failures that we'd gone through that made this moment special, right? It, it's more of the process and the journey rather than the outcome. So when you're going, and I, to tell you the truth, like, I know I'm a bit more removed, but sometimes I do interviews and people are like, do you remember this game where blank, 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 blank? I'm like, no, I don't, right? Because you, in that moment, in those games, it was the biggest moment of my life. I remember the Olympics and winning the medal. Right, absolutely. But these things that we think matter most, in the long scheme of things, it doesn't. Just remember that you're, it's going to be up and down, right? Like, it's not going to be smooth sailing. But you've got, what you've got to remember and learn is the lessons. And that's why I say failure is an awesome thing. Because it really makes you check and be like, do I really want this? What do I need to learn from this? So that you can move forward. So I just say, like, don't put everything, like, if someone doesn't have time for you, then they weren't meant to be in your life in an impactful way. Move on. You'll find somebody who's meant to be impactful in your life, but you'll only find them if you're looking for it. If you're busy looking and thinking about the one person that turned you down, you may miss the greatest opportunity, which is right in front of you. So just continue to evolve, 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 evolve. You know, and, and that's, the, that's the one thing I'd say, like the person you are today is no chance gonna be who you are in five years, not a chance. But you gotta see who you wanna be in five years. I mean, if you guys aren't feeling inspired, I'm feeling inspired. Better go run a marathon. But <laughs> I think uh, one question more, and then I'll open it up to them because they do have a couple questions. Um, since the, the, the chapter we were going to talk about this week was barriers to leadership. And being a mm -hmm. female and a woman of color in leadership, what barriers have you faced becoming a leader? Um, <laughs> I mean, how long do we have? Um, I would just say this. Like, for me... Like being a woman of color in a leadership position, there's there's obviously perks to it. And then there's things that, that make it heavier. Um, I always, as a kid, when I was like four years old, I used to go into my dad's office and go into his chair and just sit there and twirl and be like, one day I'm going to do something big. I, that was just what I wanted to do. I never really thought small. And I just challenge you to, to do the same. Like for me, 
I, I, I want to live a life of purpose and I want to live a life that matters. I think you know this about me. So like whether it was me becoming a UNICEF ambassador or whatnot, it wasn't that I like when I was a young kid, I'm like, I want to be a UNICEF ambassador. I just wanted to matter and I wanted to do big things. And I think being a woman in this position, it's, you know, sometimes I'm the only woman sitting at the table. Sometimes I'm the only woman of color sitting at the table, but it's being mindful to, to those around me. And, and understanding, like, what do I need to say to connect to these people so that I can impact for the better? You know, and you need to figure that role in your journey. People, for me, know that they will always get authenticity. Like, that's my reputation. I will always try to be positive, but I can have my, put my f- foot down and be like, that's not good enough. But they know where it's coming from. It's not coming from a place so that I can further advance. It's come from a place that as a collective, we can further advance because I'm inspired by something bigger than myself. I don't, I don't want to be X, Y, Z for me. I want to get more women in these roles, more girls playing the game of, of soccer and football. I'm in charge of 41, not in charge of, I'm helping develop and grow 41 different countries right now in women's soccer. So for me, it was just like, let me show how I can change lives through this game that changed me. So I think it's just figuring out who you are, the journey you want to be, who do you want people to speak and say about you? Like for me, as you're sitting here talking, I'm kind of being like, this is, this is, this is amazing because never would I have known from an internship where I was like, listen, I just want you to get the best out of these couple, these months together. And I want you to walk away feeling more confident. I want you to believe that you can do anything. And the fact that we're on this call right now and I'm listening to you, I mean, sometimes it's actually hard to hear somebody talk about you. I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I'd rather just talk rather than you be like, but then when I actually hear you speak the way you're speaking, I'm like, cool. Like maybe I am living my life of purpose and I am accomplishing what I want to accomplish, you know? And I think the more that we as human beings can try to connect on something bigger than ourselves, that's when big things happen. Don't focus on just you. Focus on what you can do to be of service or to make this world a better place. And maybe your reach is one, two people. Maybe your reach is a million. Who knows? But seek to be the best version of yourself so you can have others be the best version of them. Karina always hits it on the nail. She always sets it on fire. (laughs) No, I think you're totally right. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's the power of connection and the power of a moment. You know, I never thought that I would be here, you know, in front of you guys being a professor. I mean, I, when I was in, sitting in front of Karina, all I thought about was a soccer ball at my foot. My heart was broken because I wanted to keep kicking that soccer ball at my feet. Little did I know that soccer ball had no place really in my head anymore. What I really wanted to do was live a life of purpose. And I think that that's the biggest thing that I walked away with from CONCACAF and from meeting you. I wanted to live a life of purpose because every single thing we did every single day was to affect millions of girls in in 41 different regions, the 41 different countries, and to see how we can better the game and, like you said, impact it. And I really learned that soccer was a tool to use to move the needle forward for women, for not even women, for men, for everybody to learn about leadership and what it can really do to impact you. So, yeah. I'm going to open up the floor now to what you guys have. If you have any questions, raise your hand. Is there any questions right now? Matt, you have a question? You have two? All right. So, Nick, can you help us out? Because so we don't, he's going to have to like tell it to because like the mics are in here are dumb right now. Can I make a, a comment yeah. um, quickly as this is happening? I think it's important. And maybe you can just yell out, but what are, what's one of the most important things you can give somebody? She's asking you guys, knowledge, knowledge, time, respect. Transparency. Transparency. Anything else, guys? Perspective. I love it all, but I'm going to give you the simple answer. If you want to continue to rise, it's your eyes. Think about that. When someone's talking to you, one of the most important things you can give them is your eyes because then you make them feel seen heard that they matter so if i were in this class right now with all of you i'd be looking right and you never know you don't know even know if i may impact your life or not or vice versa but 
in this day and age, I'm going to give you a very important note. And one of the most important things you can give people is right here. Just a, just a thought. I'm just sharing that with you. But anyway, question, go ahead. <laughs> it's really important now with technology. Your eyes, yeah. not eyes at your iPhone. Eyes at your whoever you're talking to. All right, so Matt, you got two questions. So you can scream them out or tell them to Nick and we'll try to get them. So who's the best wearing played against and what's the best advice on player gave you? So who's the best player you played against and what's the best advice another player gave to you? The best player I've ever played against. <laughs> I can't even narrow that down. Um, well, I'm a FIFA legend, so I actually get to play with the men and the women too. So, I mean, I don't even know how, how far you guys go back, but like all the legends, I was a goalkeeper. So like Peter Schmeichel, um, I got to hang out with him. He gave me his first jersey, Cannavaro, um, Henri, like all, all of those guys that – you know, like I said, Messi, actually, my first Olympics was the same Olympics as Messi. And we were in the same uh, building and in the Olympics, you kind of travel around together. So I was playing pool with Messi and all of that fun stuff. On the female side, I'll just say some names you guys probably know. Rapino, you know, Alex Morgan. These are the American players. Christine Sinclair from Canada, obviously best player I've played with. Um, I can't pick one. So best advice, um, just, just keep being you. I mean, that's off the field, but on the field. If you ever saw me play, I was this way in front of sold out stadiums or practice. I, I was like, I'm enjoying my life. I am. I thought games, I, I was the weird one in the locker room, just dancing and being like, let's go, because I felt the games were the reward with a hard week of work so I wasn't stressed if you saw me in a penalty kick shootout nobody wanted to face me because I was kind of in your face <laughs> I was kind of like you ain't gonna score on me what do you want to do I was just kind of tra talking trash um I I, I I I was just always who I am and I think that's why people know that for me you're gonna get the authentic Karina LeBlanc you're not gonna get a box down version of myself so my advice to you would just be like own who you are, celebrate who you are. Um, I'm not uh, a boastful person. I'm, I'm, I'm confident, but I'm humble. Um, and I would just say, if, if, like, celebrate the best parts of you and others will be drawn towards that. If you're trying to be too fake, people figure that out about you too. But I mean, if you were brave enough to ask this question, so I'd just say, keep celebrating you. <laughs> Who's next? This one? What happened? What made you successful for so many years? <laughs> success was a heavy question. Because um, what is success, right? Um, I think, like in sports, it was it used to be championships. Like when I first got on the national team, I was like, oh, I want to be in the national team. And then I was there and I wanted to stay there. I think success to me is, is being the best version of yourself that you've thought of and, and, and being clear on that and every day striving towards that and recognizing every day you cannot be your absolute best. So some days you may be 90%, 80% of your best, but I think I, I was always striving to be the best version of myself. So that meant for me as a player, that meant for me as a daughter, uh, you know, for me now as a wife, as a mother, um, I was always striving to be the best version of myself. I'll tell you a story. My first Olympics, we went to the Olympics and we're like, ooh, we want to win a medal. We didn't win a medal. I mean, I, I, I at that point was like, so once you're down early, you just kind of get to enjoy the games. And so we went out and went to all the different sports. So I remember I had lunch with the Williams sisters, Serena Williams and Venus, took tons of pictures like with, Kobe Bryant, the great Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, like, yeah, this is great. Tons of pictures. I have no idea where those pictures are. Next Olympics, we went to win a medal. I mean, to inspire generation. And we won a medal. And again, I tell you this story because we were inspired by something bigger than ourselves. We were like, you know what? In order to do this, and mind you, nine months late before that, we came dead last at the World Cup. 
because we had horrible leadership. We were disconnected at the team. But literally nine months later with the same team, a different coach and a different why, we won a medal for our country. And so to go back to why I've been successful is because I've live, been living a life filled with my why and purpose. I'm not on this world to make everyone in the world happy. I'm on this world to, to live the reason I'm put on this earth to be, which I think is to impact others for, for, for the better. And that's what guides me. Um, and so I guess I would challenge each and every one of you to try to figure out this question, what is my why? Like, why am I here on this earth? What is my purpose? And when you figure that part out, then what's meant for you will be. And I think success is a hard, it's a different word. If you, if you ask a million people what is success, it'll be different for everybody. But I can just say to you, figure out your why, figure out your purpose. Remember, think of what do you uniquely bring to this earth? Because each and every one of you brings something differently. And if you haven't thought about that question, wow, this is a great question to think about. But I'm driven by success, and my success is to live my why in this earth. Beautiful. Next. What drives you to be the person you are every day? Well, now that I'm a mama, <laughs> first time, I just want to be her hero. That's it. So every single day, I'm like, I want to do whatever I need to do now to be her hero. Listen, this is interesting times in this world that we're in, right? Um, being a woman of color, it's interesting because I know a lot has happened and, and I've been trying to figure out my voice in all of this, right? And I, it comes down to when she asked me 20 years from now and she says, mommy, what did you do during that time? I want to be able to more than tell her what I did. I want to be able to share her actions of what I did. So at this stage in my life, it's to be her hero. If you ask me that again, I just had her. She's a year old. She's, she's, trust me, if she came in here, she'd be like, Ooh! like she's ready for the stage, right? Um, if you ask me, I just wanted to be the best version of myself. Um, I, but this is why, again, I say to you, you've got to ask yourself the hard question of what is your why and why are you here on this earth, you know? And whatever struggles life has presented to you and I, everything that you've been through, just know that it's putting footprints in your life that are going to lead you to where you need to be. Because you said, have there been people that have told you to choose a different career path? And how did you go about that? I think I got it right. Yes, uh, many people. Um, first of all, <laughs> nobody really even thought women's soccer was going to be anything. So <laughs> they're like, you're a woman and you're going to go into sports. Didn't listen to them. Then there's like, okay, you got to go into coaching. That's all women are going to do. Didn't listen to them. I studied um, business administration and focus in management in college. I do that now, but didn't exactly take that route. People all this time always have opinions, especially when you have somebody who um, more people know about. They always want to tell you what you should do. I get inundated with emails of, here's a big opportunity for you. You'd be perfect for this. Again, it's going to come back to my why and my purpose, right? I don't know where I'm going to be 10 years from now, but I do know I will be living a life aligned with my why and my purpose. And I think that's a bit different from maybe how some people live their life. I would just say it comes back to that for me. And that's how I know I'm doing the right thing on this earth. It's, it's big, it's weird. Like, like I'm a UNICEF ambassador and people, I'll tell you a quick story. This is how I knew I was, so played for my country, won a medal, whatever. And our coach came up to me and he said, if you think you're living your purpose on this earth, and you think it is about kicking a soccer ball for a country that failed you. And I was like, what are you talking about, man? I'm like, what? <laughs> right? I was always the last one signing autographs. I was like, you know. 
And it led me on this journey. And you'll always get what you're looking for. And so I was at this big charity thing. And all the athletes were on stage because we had some big artists on stage. And of course, being Olympians, we get to be on stage with them. But I was hanging out with my table because I was like, these people are cool. Because first of all, who pays like $100,000 to sit at a table with me? Sweet, let's do this. And so I was talking and having fun. And at the end, this woman gives me her card. She's like, what time do you leave town? I'd love to meet with you in the morning. Turns out she's the COO of UNICEF. And I was like, and we'd just been talking about life, right? I was like, I don't know what I'm doing next in life. I got to retire in a couple of years, but I want to live a life of purpose. So my first trip is to Honduras, fly to Honduras. And I fly into the city and I get off and they put me in this like small room and they're like, we've had 44 deaths tonight. Uh, you'll have like a gunman outside your door. And I was like, what? Like, this is not the world I'm from. And so we go do all these things like political stuff, TV, CNN. But the first thing I do that really hits me is a camp for young girls, 13 and 14 year olds who are putting down their babies because you only know what you know. And the fact that I showed up, they'd never seen me play in a World Cup in their Olympics. I just show up. So I'm running around. It's this dirt gravel road where all of us would be like, we're just going to talk today. And these girls are jumping up and down. And immediately I noticed five gray jerseys. And I'm like, where'd those jerseys come from? So they come around. They're like, Miss LeBlanc, everything okay? I was like, where'd those jerseys come from? So the coach comes. He said, hey, we got it years ago from a, 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 a club up in Canada. What's the big deal? So these jerseys had holes in them, right? They're old. Those five jerseys in the middle of Honduras, in the middle of like nowhere, were the five, was the same jersey of the first ever club team I'd played for in Canada. And it hit me. I'm doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing at this moment in my life. And that tweaked my whole vision on life and everything. I was like, you know what? I'm put on this earth to do an impact. Let me just lead a life of that. And that's what's led me. Like, everyone was like, how'd you become a UNICEF ambassador? Because I was the first ever female soccer player. Like, how, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I just lived a life where I was trying to genuinely be the best version of myself and impact others. And I was connected on something bigger than myself. Same thing we did with our team. We won an Olympic medal. So there you have it. Who's next? Pampa? So he said that there, we see a lot of good developed countries um, with, with women's soccer, like we see the US, we see Canada, Mexico, Australia. And his question is, how can other countries um, develop their soccer teams to be, you know, as good? So That's a great question. So we released our strategy a couple of years ago with three objectives, right? We need to change perceptions because what we see in North America of what women can do in sports is not what we see in some of these other countries, right? Some countries are like, parents are like, I don't, my daughter doesn't need, my daughter's not, can't be an athlete. She's a young girl. She should be, unfortunately, cooking and making dresses, right? So this is still a reality. Some are like, listen, there's no, there's no pathway. So we need to change the perceptions to show what the game can actually do for young girl and women. We also need to build sustainable foundations. And I mean sustainable. Ones where, where we go into a country as we have, we have projects where we try to grow participation and we try to just get girls out there playing. And it's been proven when we do this for young girls, they walk away from the session more confident. They walk away being like, I can say no. I can do great things because we all know the power of sports. And the third I already brought up, which is grow participation, because we got to get more girls in the game. And the World Cups do this. Like every single World Cup we've had in the last couple of years have been bigger, deeper, stronger, because the world's starting to catch on to the idea and the vibe that like women are awesome. Women should be playing sports. There's a road in that. And the best part is that the allies, which are the men, 
So even though I'm sitting here talking about women's football, women's soccer, if you're a man, you are just, you have just important of a role in growing the women's game. And I think we're seeing this in all conversations now. It's not just up to women to make a difference. It's men being like, yo, I can play a role in this, right? I can open the doors. I can create positions for women. I can be an ally. And I think this is, uh, I mean, a global conversation, not just for women in sports, but when we all step up and be like, I play a role in this, I can help, I can do my part. That's when we start to shift things. Any other questions in here? I have one. Okay. Holly, I think. Yes, ma'am. Go, Holly, go. <clears throat> Um, Mrs. LeBlanc, I just want to say quickly that I told Professor Vega last night via email that I actually had the pleasure of meeting both you and your husband about two years ago. I don't know if you recall, but it, it was at a BFA banquet. Yeah. I was assisting Coach Carl Lynch. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. 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 Are you in Bahamas? It, it was... Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm still currently in the Bahamas, but it was so crazy because hey, I'm just sort of catering to everybody, just going to the tables, just doing a little bit of networking or whatnot. And you all come up to this table and I'm, I don't even know who you are. And so when you introduce yourself to me, I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. So it just goes <laughs> to show, like you said, you never really know who you're speaking to. So I thought that was just amazing. But um, I do have one question. What is the biggest risk you took branding yourself and what was the outcome? First of all, thank you. Hi. Um, I'm in the Bahamas right now. I don't know if you know that. So woody woo. Oh, no, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> um, that's so funny. Well, first of all, make sure you do you still talk to Carl and the BFA? Make sure you tell yes, them I that do. we just connected yes, on do. this because that's such a small world. Um, but you, so your question is, what's the biggest uh, leap I took and what was the outcome? Yes, ma'am. Brand, branding oh, branding myself. Um, well, I'll tell you what I made sure I did do. Um, I made sure I aligned with brands that were aligned with my values, right? You, you asked me about branding, right? Before I go further into this. Right? You asked me about branding? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I will tell you, I had a big company, I won't say the name, that came at me with a great big contract. And I turned it down. And I, I, I thought it was just between me and that company. But that company would go and be like, she turned us down, which actually made my name even bigger because I was strong enough to say no to a company that did not align with my values. So I would say that was a big risk. And the big outcome is that other companies that were aligned with my values ended up coming and saying, hey, we'd like to offer you a contract. And it ended up being bigger than the original one that they were going with. Because they were like, we need more women who are authentic and who are true to who they are. So in this world and day of social media, just be really, and I know you guys hear this all the time, be very careful with who you engage with, what you support, because years down the road, it could come back to haunt you. And if you are thinking of branding yourself, and guess what? You're in sales every single day, just so you all know that. You're in sales every day because you're in sale for yourself. And so you need to make sure that whatever you're putting out there is aligned with who you want to be. So even if you're liking something that you're like, this is kind of funny. And then this day and age where everybody's getting canceled for the right reasons, I think. Be careful. Make sure you're not the one to make that happen. But find the brands that align with you and your values and who you want to be. And just start, if, you, if it's branding, start following them and be like, you know what? Because to Hallie's point, is it Haley or Hallie? Hallie. Hallie. To Hallie's point, you never know. Hallie. <laughs> you never know. One of my great friends, she, her name is spent the same way, and it's Haley, so I apologize. Um, Hallie Berry. 
you never know when you're going to meet somebody and it's going to come align with you. You never know when you're going to like or say something that's going to come against you. So whenever you're speaking in social media, even if it's a joke, make sure that if your dream brand was watching you, they'd give you a thumbs up. And I would say for you, as you start to figure out life and what you want to do, think of the 10 companies that you'd love to work for. Think like, and make a list, the 10 companies you'd love to work for and be like, you know what? I'd love to work for Nike. I'd love to, whatever it is that you're about. And start to just follow them and see what they're into and help that guide you. But again, it's so important to be vision clear on something. Because if you're vision clear on nothing, you'll end up nowhere. If you're vision clear on something and something that challenges you, because to the quote, your dream should scare you, right? Make sure you have that and make sure you continue to be, okay, today, what do I need to do today to get to there? So, Hallie, I hope I answered your question. I'm so glad to see you again. We're in, we're in Bahamas together, but I, I, I don't go out into the world, so that doesn't help me at all because... <laughs> I stay at home because that's just what this time has to do. But always think about yourself as a brand and as an asset. And you're in sales every single day for your brand and your asset. See, now next time I won't, I won't forget you. Next time you can be like, hey, it's me, oh. Holly, not, you know, right? Yes, uh, are there any other questions in here? Any last questions? No? Okay, so Karina, any final words of wisdom? Yeah, I'd say, don't forget what's one of the most important things you can give somebody, which is your eyes, especially if you're speaking to them. Believe in yourself. Like, if not you, then who? And if not now, then when? Realize the greatness that you have inside of you. And every day you open your mouth or you say or do something, it can either make or break your future. So be mindful of that. But I'll just say like dream crazy big because like I shouldn't be here talking to you today. I was the shyest kid from a small Caribbean country. The Dominica, you guys may even have to Google that. It's not Dominican Republic, it's Dominica. And now I'm here chatting with you. You never know. But just remember the greatness you have inside of you. Be vision clear of who you want to be. Be your own hero. And hey, many years from now, who knows? Maybe we'll work together. But make sure you, you also try to hire me if I'm looking for a job. Yeah. And Karina. follow me on Instagram. Yeah. I'll definitely put your at name so I can follow you. Karina, thank you so much for coming by and uh, uh, blessing us with your presence. Um, it's always nice to see you and hear you. Your energy is contagious. And I'm sure there's a lot of inspired young people in the crowd right now who are ready to go find their why and live a life of purpose. So guys, let's give her a round of applause. Karina, thank you so much. You're the best. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you for all the good things that you're doing and say hi to Paris for me. <laughs> I will. Thanks, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Karina. Have All a good right, one. Take care. Bye. Bye.